start with a square, 12 by 12 inch square. Larger paper, same type drawing paper, 36 by 24, can be found over by cabinet 2 near the materials wall and cut down using a paper cutter. So more of these can be made. The first step, the very first step, some groups got to this, other groups didn't. 1A got this far. This paper gets quartered. Students can do this all themselves. This paper gets labeled. This is for you. Please not for playing for the kids, because I'm going to talk as though I'm talking to grown-ups. Please don't play this for the students as this is what we need to do. Thank you in advance. Quartered paper. Yay. It's labeled with my name. We're in the camera right here, and it's showing things in reverse, but yay. Quartered paper. We then want to label these. And it's less important, but it does help. I, spelling, I don't care about. Indicating what's what, I do care about. We need three labels. Front, back, and side. I'm going to throw that up in three out of my four boxes. Front, back, and side. It's backwards to you. Maybe I can invert this whole video, and, or, or whatever it is, flip the whole video and have everything be legible. I've got these three things. One box is blank. That's okay. To get us started, again, first grade, 1A got this far, 2A got this far in one item. We're going to keep pushing it. Um, you're going to assign students to tables 1, 2, 3, and 4. I do not believe we need anyone at table 5 for this group. In fact, I'm pretty sure we don't need anyone at table 5. Let's keep it that way. 4 to table, 5 where we need to. 4 is easiest. Um, I'm going to model this using the drill. The same applies for the, for the sharpener, same applies for the iron, same applies for the fan. This will all be set up. Um, again, these are for teacher hands, not student hands. These are the items that we're working with for our art, not about, and it's something that everyone's going to use, not just one person. So, oh, I need to move it. No, you don't. Period. You can move your body a little bit if you have to, but it's going to stay still. All right, here we go. So, once all students have been handed, once the paper's been handed out, the pencils have been handed out, and they've had that chance to divvy it up, please release them to tables. One uh, A already has had the chance to start, so some kids are, it may be clear on their paper that they need to still finish up the pencil sharpener. Uh, kids that are finishing up their first one, start there, and then we can go from there. Uh, but we're going to treat this as though we're starting from brand new, fresh. I'm sitting at one end of the, of the table. I can see, and you can see, the side of our object. The cool part about this, we only have one box for side because all these items are fairly similar on the sides. There's no major differences. The objective now, looking at the side, is to find some sh is to find the basic shapes. Um, analytic cubism, earliest cubism that, that we're looking at was about fight was about pulling out the ge finding geometric shapes and curves inside of everyday items, pulling those pieces out and putting them back together. That's what we're going to be doing. So I'm looking at the side, from my side view of this drill. Things I'm seeing are this, is this, I'm looking at the sides, I'm going to fill in the side box. The rectangle at the base. Oh, there's a rectangle down there. Oh, there's a rectangle. Okay, what else do I have? Um, different things for different strokes for different folks. I've got this interesting shape up on the side, on the top here. And the way I see it functioning, it's kind of... It's not about high detail either. It's about just drawing what we see, finding the simplified shapes. I'm seeing that this ring right here has an interesting shape that kind of... I wish there was a way I could do this. You could see what I was doing at the same time, but I haven't figured that part out yet. Okay, the ring, and then I see this part up here has kind of... Okay, I'm finding the big areas. Ooh, other shapes I see. I see there's a little thing right here, this guy. Okay, I see... Ooh, I see part of the trigger there is a cool shape that looks kind of alike. 
I see. What else do I see? I want to look at this thing from the side. Down on I see the venting towards the back. I'm not going to see it all. I see the very hint of this back circle here. Well, and again, I'm going quickly so that, I don't know, you guys can keep moving. But what I end up with is not a drawing of the item, but a drawing of the shapes I see. So this guy, I'm kind of noticing it. Where was I noticing it? Oh, there was the detail on the side here. Okay, the front of the drill, I've got some attempts at that area. The very back, the side of the circle here is right here. So it's, it's almost like disassembling into the shapes and not even the parts, into the shapes that we see hiding inside. None of these are perfect. None of them are going to be. These can also be simplified. There is no problem with that. It's not going to be perfect. We don't want it to be perfect. There's no, yeah, and there's no you're doing it wrong, right? We know that. Um, once a student finishes there, they can check with the neighbor. Hey, are you done? Oh, can we switch seats? Meaning, I'm moving the drill right now for the sake of the camera, but instead, I would move from here over here and then get this view. All right. Uh, I'm going to, and then I would draw what I see from the front. So I'd repeat this process. Okay, what do I see? Well, I'm looking straight down this drill. I see some, a series of circles, actually. That's kind of cool. What else do I see? Oh, I see the... kind of the base, and I see this cool thing that's part of the battery pack. I hope I'm not, not a cred on a cracker. I hope I don't miss my... Um, sorry, this is the wrong time to do this. Kelly Swan, Julie Reed, Daniel Blum. I think I'm okay. Anyway, okay, so I want to draw all the shapes I see from the angle that I see it, and I'm looking at this thing, and I can move my head up and down. I'm like, oh, there's the trigger again. Thank you for your patience, guys. Uh, oh, and I see the neck of this guy is kind of cool. The neck of the drill. I don't know if that's what you call it. I'm going to repeat this process for the front, the side, and the back. And then I draw what you guys see here. So I see a circle here. I see some rectangles down here. I found all of these pieces. Now, what I think would be kind of cool, the next step here is to simplify those lines. It really depends on, you feel the room and feel the energy. But it's time to put it all together. The cool thing about cubism is that people can look at something and understand what it is without it looking anything like it. We look at the board in the back. And with a little bit of work, you can say, oh, that's a candle, a pitcher, and a pot. But they don't look like candles, pitchers, and pots. The cool thing about cubism is I'm going to paint the trash can in such a way that it looks nothing. I'm going to paint a picture of the trash can in such a way that it looks nothing like the trash can. And yet we can identify it as the trash can. It's a little confusing. It's a little tricky. It's kind of super cool. Uh, that fourth box can then be spent with experiments for putting it back together uh, with K and, or with first grade, that's the end goal today, is to experiment and put it back together. Is to say, hey, what are the cool shapes that I see? We can even simplify some of those shapes that are seen. By putting pieces together, we can. And simplifying as we go. Down on Krampakri. Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, cool, there's the trigger. And the trigger is time. Walk away, walking backwards. Is it going to look anything like it's supposed to? It might, but there's no guarantees that it will. There's no guarantees that it will. Let me see, what else do I want to include here? I would like to include... Other stuff that I see. Oh, I see. Cool. I've got that whole platform that I want to play with. Right, the angles don't have to make sense. 
Now, this is what I got just kind of going after it. Who knows what someone else might get. But this is my drill. You know, who knows? This is my experiment with my drill. I'm trying to include the parts that I have and then put them back together. Is that clear? Is it evident? I don't know, but it's something. And it can work. So with the first graders, we really want to take our time and get to this point. That'll be awesome. If, there, if there's then, hey, I'm done. Oh, cool. We can talk. We can then, uh, once you've reached this point, once the students have had a chance to experiment their, with their ideas, then it's a chance. Oh, right. I kind of want to start over, but I don't want to start over. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, when first grade reaches this point, I would like them to compare and contrast with each other about what's going on. And once they've had a chance to check in with each other, like maybe even just circle the table, walk around, literally stand up and walk around and check out what their neighbors have tried. It's not a criticism thing, it's an opportunity to share what you're working on. Then we can do a rotate to the next table. 